Okay, so picture this. You're trekking across some really rugged terrain, but you're not on foot and you're not in some gas-guzzling ATV. You're riding a robotic horse. A robotic horse. Yeah, and it's powered by hydrogen. What? This isn't some far-off sci-fi scenario. Yeah. This is Kawasaki Heavy Industries, and they just unveiled this concept vehicle. It's called the Corleo. Get this, at the Osaka Kansai Expo, like just a few days ago, April 5th, 2025. Kawasaki, huh? You know them for their motorcycles, right? Right, exactly. And aerospace and those huge industrial robots they build, and now this uh, hydrogen-powered robotic horse. Okay, I'll bite. What's the angle here? Is this a publicity stunt, or is there something deeper going on? That's what we're diving into today because you and everyone listening are here because you want to understand what the core Leo really signifies, right? Yeah. We're going to get into the core technology, Kawasaki's big bet on hydrogen as a fuel source and what all this could mean down the line. You want the key insights without all the hype and frankly, so do I. Well, let's not forget the hype is part of the story too. Look at what's blowing up on X right now. People are fascinated by this blend of like recognizable tech, you know, robots but with this futuristic energy source oh absolutely the internet's having a field day with this thing it's both <laughs> practical and just plain cool you know <laughs> It definitely hits that sweet spot. To set the scene, this reveal happened at the Osaka Kansai Expo. It's running for a while, April 13th to October 13th, 2025, over on Yumashima in Osaka Bay. Big expo. Huge. The theme is designing future society for our lives. And, well, Kawasaki's creation kind of steals the show in that department. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a robotic horse? I mean, come on. I know, right? So the Corleo itself was part of this specific exhibition called Future Life Expo, Future City, sponsored by Kawasaki. So they're really leaning into this whole Future of Cities thing. Big time. It's not just about showing off. It's about them saying, hey, this is how we think transportation could evolve in the future. Okay, let's talk about what this thing actually looks like. So imagine a horse right but made of metal and composite materials about five feet tall at the shoulder okay i'm picturing it sleek frame matte black finish with these exposed metal joints that give it a really industrial look almost like a cyberpunk horse okay i like where this is going and instead of hooves well it's got these articulated legs each one ending in a split rubber hoof i guess you'd call it so not quite like a horse's hoof then no not exactly but that split design is clever you know how so well think about it it probably gives it way more traction and stability on uneven ground compared to if it just had one solid foot ah uh, yeah that makes sense taking inspiration from nature i see exactly now here's where it gets really interesting the corleo is powered by a 150 cc hydrogen engine but it doesn't directly power the legs like a car engine would really so how does it work that engine drives a generator which produces electricity and that electricity powers individual motors in each leg so it's like a hydrogen electric hybrid but in this robotic horse form you got it it's a really unique setup yeah that is pretty out there why do you think they went that route well hydrogen is clean burning the only byproduct is water vapor which is great but it doesn't have the same energy density as gasoline so using it to generate electricity like this they can get more precise control over the power and torque going to each leg that's smart you're yeah. essentially optimizing for efficiency and control exactly now how do you ride this thing you ask no reins no pedals you steer this thing by shifting your weight whoa like a horse yeah exactly or like those segways from way back when yeah but here's the really mind-blowing part there's an AI system constantly working in the background to maintain balance and adjust the stride of each leg based on the terrain and the rider's movements. Seriously? How fast are we talking here? Kawasaki said in some early demos it was making up to 60 adjustments per second. 60? That's insane. It is. It's like the AI is anticipating what's going to happen and adjusting before it even happens. That's how it stays so stable. Oh, that's some serious computing power and real-time analysis going on there. No kidding. Mm -hmm. And to keep the writer informed, there's a heads-up display, a HUD that projects key info, like how much hydrogen is left and navigation details, stability metrics, all that jazz. So it's like a fighter jet for the trails? Yeah, kind of. Kawasaki's calling this thing an off-road sensory personal mobility machine. Okay, that's a mouthful. It is, right? Mm -hmm. But it basically means they see this being used in places where regular vehicles just wouldn't cut it. You know, rough terrain, mountains, forests, all that. So exploration, search and rescue even. Exactly. They even released a video of the Corleo navigating some pretty gnarly terrain. It's impressive. I bet. Sounds like they've really thought this through. Yeah, but here's the thing. It's important to remember this is still just a concept model. Kawasaki's talking about a 2050 time frame for all of this. So 25 years from now. Yep. 
they're playing a long game here. So we don't have any concrete specs yet. No top speed, no range on a full hydrogen tank, no idea how much weight it can carry. It's all very much up in the air. Makes sense. I mean, it is a yeah. pretty radical concept. Yeah, it is. Now let's talk about hydrogen for a second because this is a big part of the story. Kawasaki has been involved in hydrogen tech since the 2010s. They've been developing supply chains. They even experimented with fuel cell motorcycles. Really? So they've been in this game for a while. Oh, yeah. Their company motto is working as one for the good of the planet. And this whole hydrogen push really seems to embody that, you know? Yeah, it definitely seems to align with that mission. And the beauty of hydrogen is that it burns clean. The only byproduct is water vapor, which fits perfectly with Japan's goal of becoming carbon neutral by 2050. So this isn't just a cool tech demo, it's tied into a larger national strategy. 100%. And it's not just Kawasaki. The Japanese government is heavily investing in hydrogen as well. They see it as a key part of their plan to decarbonize the country. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Japan's been leading the charge on hydrogen for a while now. Yeah, they're all in Kawasaki's even partnering with companies like Airbus and Kansai airports to explore hydrogen and aviation. So they're thinking beyond just land-based transportation. Oh, yeah. They see a huge surge in demand for hydrogen coming in the next few decades, and they want to be ready. It's a smart move, but let's be real. Hydrogen isn't a silver bullet. There are some serious challenges that need to be addressed. Oh, absolutely. For starters, producing hydrogen can be very energy intensive, and right now a lot of it still relies on fossil fuels, which kind of defeats the purpose. Right. We need to figure out how to scale up green hydrogen production methods like using renewable energy to power the process. Exactly. Otherwise, we're just trading one problem for another. And then there's the whole issue of storage and transport. Liquid yeah. hydrogen needs to be kept super cold, which requires specialized tanks and infrastructure. Yeah. And refueling stations for hydrogen vehicles are still pretty rare. It's not like you can just pull up to any gas station and fill up. But right now, it's very much early adopter territory. It is. And people are definitely voicing those concerns. You know, I was seeing some comments on X the other day. People are like, OK, cool robot horse. But where am I going to refuel this thing? Yeah. I mean, that's a valid question. Totally. So there's a lot of work to be done on the infrastructure side if hydrogen is really going to take off. Definitely. It's not just about the tech itself. It's about the whole ecosystem. OK, now let's talk about the robotic side of things, because that's another huge part of this story. OK, shoot. The Corleo's leg technology isn't just some random invention. It's built on decades of experience. Kawasaki has been a leader in industrial robotics since the 1960s. They know how to build complex automated systems. So this isn't their first rodeo, so to speak. Not at all. They're applying that expertise to a whole new domain. Interesting. So each leg on the Corleo has its own independent motor and suspension system. And that AI we talked about earlier, it's not just keeping the thing upright. It's constantly analyzing the terrain, the rider's weight distribution, and adjusting the stride and power output of each leg individually. We're talking about some serious fine tuning here. Oh, yeah. 60 adjustments per second. Remember, it's mind boggling. And those rubber hooves, they're not just for show, right? Nope. They're designed for maximum grip on all sorts of surfaces, and the way the front and rear legs move independently helps to absorb shocks and keep the rider stable. So it's really mimicking the way an animal moves. Exactly. They're using biomimicry to solve engineering problems. Very cool. And here's another cool detail. Kawasaki's been talking about how the Corleo handles like one of their ninja motorcycles. Yeah. You know, you lean forward to accelerate, lean back to decelerate. They've even got adjustable stirrups and a HUD that tracks the rider's center of gravity. Wait, so it's like a motorcycle, but with legs? Kind of. It's like they've taken their expertise in motorcycle design and rider dynamics and applied it to this whole new form factor. That's wild. It is. As you can imagine, the moment this thing was unveiled, people online went nuts. Comparisons to Horizon Zero Dawn, Star Wars, all that. Yeah, I saw some of those memes pretty funny. Oh, yeah. The Internet's having a field day. But Kawasaki seems to be focusing on the practical side of things. You know, they see this as a real tool for off-road exploration and mobility. OK, so less laser beams more navigating tough terrain. Exactly. But there are still some big questions. We didn't see it tackling any major obstacles in that demo video, and they haven't said how much weight it can carry. Yeah, that's crucial information. It is, and it makes you wonder how well it would actually perform in really challenging environments and how safe it would be for the rider. Those are definitely things they'll need to address as they develop this further. For sure. Yeah. Now, Kawasaki keeps saying this is all part of their 2050 vision. Right, so this isn't something we're going to see on the market next year. Not even close. Their goal is sustainable mobility that moves and inspires. 
they're imagining a future where there are hydrogen refueling hubs all over and these robotic horses are a common sight on trails and maybe even replacing traditional vehicles in certain situations. That's a bold vision. It is. And they're not just talking about recreational use either. They're talking about search and rescue, ecotourism, even some industrial applications. So a wide range of potential uses. Exactly. And the fact that Japan is so committed to carbon neutrality is a huge driving force behind all of this. The Corleo is like a symbol of their ambition to create a cleaner future. It's a powerful statement. It is. And the public reaction has been fascinating, you know, online, especially on X. There's a ton of excitement. People are stoked about the whole hydrogen robot horse thing. Yeah, it's definitely captured the imagination. But there's also a lot of skepticism. People are questioning how practical this really is, the lack of hydrogen infrastructure, yeah. the potential costs, and that long 25-year time Line. Right. Those are all valid concerns. They are. And the media coverage has been a mix of both. You know, some outlets are super hyped up about the innovation, while others are taking a more cautious approach. Makes sense. It's such a novel concept. It's hard to know how it will all shake out. Exactly. Now, if we take a step back, it's important to note that the core technologies here aren't brand new. We've seen hydrogen engines before. We've seen quadrupedal robots before. We've seen AI balance systems before. So it's more about the combination than any one groundbreaking invention. Right. Kawasaki's bringing all these different pieces together in a really unique way. And that's often how innovation happens, right? Combining existing technologies in new and interesting ways. Exactly. But even so, there are still some major challenges ahead. We've already talked about the whole hydrogen production and infrastructure issue. And then there's the complexity of maintaining a robotic system like this with all its moving parts and sensors and AI algorithms. Yeah, that's a huge factor, especially if they want this to be a mass market product someday. And let's not forget about that 25 year timeline. A lot can happen in the tech world in 25 years. Who knows what other solutions might emerge? Yeah, the pace of innovation is relentless. It is. But even with all that said, the potential benefits of this kind of technology are pretty exciting, especially for off-road travel. Yeah, being able to explore rugged terrain without spewing out exhaust fumes. That's a big deal. And it aligns perfectly with Kawasaki's broader push into robotics and hydrogen fuel. They're not just doing this for kicks. They're serious about these technologies. They're making a long-term bet. They are. And there's this whole cultural angle, too. You know, Japan has a rich history of both robotics and motorcycle innovation, and horses have always been important in Japanese culture. Right. I saw people online calling these things samurai steeds. Yeah, exactly. It taps into something deeper. Yeah, you know? it's more than just a machine. And the fact that this was unveiled at a major expo in Japan, a country known for its embrace of cutting edge technology, adds another layer to the story. It's a showcase of Japanese ingenuity on a global stage. It is. And at the end of the day, I think it shows that Kawasaki is committed to this hydrogen future. They're putting their money where their mouth is. It's a bold move. It is. So look, you're not going to be seeing Corleos roaming the streets anytime soon, but this is a glimpse into what might be possible. A window into the future. Exactly. So yeah. here's what you should take away. Away from all this we've got this incredible fusion of hydrogen power and advanced robotics that could change how we think about off-road mobility hydrogen itself presents both huge challenges and huge opportunities and kawasaki is going all in on this 2050 vision it's a fascinating case study in how technology evolves and how different factors like energy infrastructure and cultural values play a role totally so here's a final thought for you to chew on what if kawasaki's right what if hydrogen does become widely available in the next few decades? How would that change the world? How would it change how we travel, how we explore, how we interact with the environment? Yeah, it makes you think about all the possibilities. It does. The landscape of mobility is constantly evolving, and concepts like the Corleo, even if they seem far out right now, they're pushing the boundaries and helping to shape the future. They're sparking the imagination and getting people to think differently. Exactly. And who knows, maybe one day we'll all be riding robotic horses into the sunset. No, that's a future I'd like to see. Me too.